Am sorry for the wait now here's part 4. Chapter 6. The Bet. A raiding game is coming. Issei looked at the large lake that loomed in front of him with stars in his eyes. The first time he came to these places, he had heard the movement of the water, but he had not imagined something so big. Many familiars were resting in the trees, bathing, oh just playing with each other, generating a very friendly atmosphere. The small layer of steam that was generated above the crystal clear water gave an indication that the lake was a little warm, ideal for relaxing with a good bath at room temperature. Tiamat put her hands on her hips with a small smile. This place is perfect. Anytime I'm looking to relax, take a bath, oh both, I always come here. Issei just tilted both his fists forward in excitement, indicating that he agreed with Tiamat. It's a gigantic hot spring. This is amazing. Although it seemed incredible, for the first time, Issei didn't imagine a bunch of naked girls in the water, waiting for him to get in with them. Her emotion about the matter is genuine, without any malicious ideas behind it. Deidre would think seriously, and then put a rather goofy smile on her face. You're growing, mate. Well, then, Tiamat approached the water and dipped her hand in it, then closed her eyes with satisfaction after feeling the temperature. We'd better not waste any more time. Hey. Issei blinked several times in confusion. Quickly, his confused expression began to change to a nervous one. W wait a second. We haven't separated yet to. A great glow surrounded Tiamat, making Issei look away when he realized that his clothes had started to disappear. A big and incredible blush appeared on Issei's face, while Tiamat kept touching the water with a calm look in his eyes. You can't do that if I'm in front of you, Issei would say as she looked away in great embarrassment. What's wrong with it? A loud splash was heard, giving Issei permission to see Tiamat again, who was already in the water and half of her breasts were covered by the dense steam, saving Issei's nostrils. Dragons always go skinny dipping in front of other dragons. It's a sign of trust we have among the species. We're not as touchy-feely as humans about that subject. Tiamat would answer with a mocking smile. Have you already forgotten that I'm a human? Issei would exclaim as he looked away. Tiamat would raise her index finger with an amused look on her face. You were human. But now you're a demon. He would declare Tiamat with an air of grace in his words. He was really having fun with this situation. How long had he not had fun with something so trivial? Now that he thought about it, did he ever do it? Issei would glare at Tiamat while pointing at her discriminatingly. That's right, I'm a devil. A fucking devil, not a dragon. And that really has nothing to do with it. I was raised on human principles, and it's completely normal for me to act and think like a human. Right after those words, a large amount of water completely washed over Issei, causing her to spit out a small stream of water. Stop making excuses and come at once. Tiamat would give him a mischievous smile. Oh unless you want to get wet again, but with slightly colder water. A small shiver ran through Issei's spine. She didn't think twice, and she began to take off her clothes with a big blush on her face. Tiamat was just watching him very closely, without taking her eyes off her. Issei hadn't noticed due to her great nervousness that the dragon wandered a little with her gaze over the chestnut's torso and neck, although it was only for a short second. Finally. Issei only needs to take off his bowls. Could you turn around? I'd like to keep my human dignity unpunished for a little while longer, Issei would declare as he glanced at her with a deep blush on her face. Tiamat would just roll her eyes. Good. Tiamat looked ahead as he wondered a few things. Why do humans feel so ashamed when it comes to showing their sexual organ to others? Maybe it's to defend their dignity. Tiamat would put a hand on his chin as he thought seriously. But, what kind of dignity should they have, if their dignity is valued when it comes to protecting their sexual organs? Compared to the dignity of dragons, it's something very ridiculous, obviously, that doesn't mean that you should walk all the way. Naked time, because it would be disrespectful, why the fuck am I thinking this? Tiamat would finally think with her eyes rolled back. Tiamat looked to her side when she caught the movement of the water, only to realize that Issei had already gone in to take a bath several meters from her. You enjoy it, Tiamat would ask with a small smile when she saw that Issei had a very calm expression on his face, whereas a few seconds ago he looked like a talking tomato. It's great. It would be Issei's simple answer as she extended her arms back and rested them on the rocks. Tiamat imitated her movement, 
making her breasts even more visible and larger than they already seemed. The amused air around Tiamat changed to its usual serious atmosphere, causing Issei to become a bit serious as well. Regarding your training, I don't know if I'll be able to help you. Tiamat would answer while he seriously looked at the sky. Because, Issei would ask with some surprise in his words. Tiamat would lower her gaze and look at him seriously. Because today is the last day you're here, and we're not sure what time your mistress will come to pick you up. Tiamat would respond with a bit of poison in his last word. Issei caught Tiamat's tone, but decided to leave it for later. You're right, today is the last day, Issei would look at the whole place around him with some regret. He had really liked him. But until they find me it may take a little longer. The president told me that my pieces did not link to my soul as they should have. And as a consequence, she cannot track me with the power of her pieces. Hum. Tiamat hummed at Issei's last words. He had never heard that demon pieces could fail, even in a small way. Anyway, it would be best not to waste time. Tiamat would get up, causing Issei to look away. At the very least, I'd like to show you a thing or two, before you go. Issei blinked once, confused by the tone of Tiamat's last words. He was sure they sounded a bit, downcast. Three days with someone shouldn't be a long time for someone who's been alone for a millennium. She would think Issei with some pity, but she decided not to mention anything about it, since she didn't know how the dragon might react. Line jump. Do you have any questions before we start? Tiamat would ask with a raised eyebrow. Issei nervously rubbed his hair. Do you still hate devils? Issei's question surprised Tiamat a bit, causing the dragon to look at him with both eyebrows raised piercingly. Out of fear, Issei quickly waved his hands in defense. You shouldn't answer me if you don't want to. I was just wondering because you seemed really angry earlier when you mentioned my president. I hate demons. Issei looked at the dragon with great surprise, her cold and penetrating gaze made Issei purse her lips for the answer. They are a filthy, treacherous, base, impertinent, stubborn, and meddling species. I hate the three factions, but I hate demons much more for what they are. I would never trust one of them. Issei would lower his head in sorrow after hearing those words, something that did not go unnoticed by Tiamat. But, you are special. Tiamat would exclaim as she pointed at him seriously, causing Issei to look up in great surprise. Special. Issei would wonder, not understanding the true meaning of the word. Issei was staring at Tiamat very intently, waiting for her response. She refers to my power, partner. Thanks to that, you were not affected by the demonic corruption, and that makes you someone special. Diedrag would explain proudly after emphasizing his power, while Issei's eyes shone after finding realization. Oh, that's right, I had already completely forgotten about it, Issei declared a bit embarrassed for having forgotten something so important. Can the power of a celestial dragon prevent demonic corruption? That explains many things. Tiamat would think with an air of mystery around her that Issei couldn't detect, but her partner could. By the way, Diedrag, have you been all right these days? You're talking much less than normal, Issei would ask with a lot of intrigue while looking at his gauntlet. It's better if I don't talk. Tiamat's cold and sinister aura caused Issei to find an answer immediately. I can't stand that screeching, whining voice of the underdeveloped lizard. The dragon's tone made Issei go a little white. Anyway. The aura was totally broken and everything went back to normal, making Issei give an internal sigh. Let's start at once. Attack me. After those words, Tiamat placed both hands in her pockets as she gazed at him penetratingly. I didn't do anything at first. I just want to know how strong you are. Are you sure? Issei asked worriedly, making Tiamat frown slightly. It's okay. It's okay. It's not that I'm underestimating you. Issei would quickly reply nervously, before getting serious and getting into a fighting stance. I'm not stupid. I know she's much stronger than me, so I shouldn't worry about her. Is that a fighting stance? Tiamat would wonder with a bored expression on his face upon seeing Issei's ridiculous pose. I'm beginning to doubt her master's competence regarding training and matchups. Although it's also true that she's a mere brat, she shouldn't have expected too much. Issei's gauntlet shone brightly covering his figure almost completely, and he charged at Tiamat at full speed. The dragon just stood there with her hands in her pocket as she received a hard right hand to her cheek that turned her head a bit. 
Ise didn't stop there. Her gauntlet got bright shines from every right and left she hit at all the speed she could along her entire torso. After about 15 consecutive hits, the aura finally stopped appearing, indicating that the boosts had already reached their limit. Tiamat did not go unnoticed and firmly grabbed both of Issei's arms, stopping his attack dead, leaving the brunette completely shocked after seeing that he didn't have a scratch. Is that all your power? Sensing that her question was a taunt, Issei gritted his teeth and tried to break free of the hold, failing miserably. Therefore, she resorted to plan B. Issei kicked her hard in the groin that took her by surprise, causing her to let go of the brunette's hands. Issei took a quick jump back to get away a bit, while Tiamat looked at him with a surprised look. If I had been a man, that might have hurt a little. Tiamat would say as he looked at his crotch, causing Issei to roll his eyes. But that's not why I miss Tiamat's inattention. It's my opportunity. Issei thought as he charged her fist with a great amount of force to hit her in the abdomen. This feeling, the feeling, the direction, it's an incredible hit. Issei would have a little flashback to when he sent Rainair flying with a punch. It's even better than that time. Issei connected his fist with fate, generating a small blizzard around the blow. Tiamat's hair blended seamlessly with the gusts of wind, indicating that it had been a really strong blow. Even that blow could have affected a high-class devil, that meant that he sure had done a bit of damage to it. It would have tickled me, if you had chosen the right place to land that punch. Tiamat's face right now, really, really scary. Issei was wide-eyed, in complete shock, still with his head down. I didn't move her even an inch, who the hell is she really? To face a really strong opponent, Issei would break away from Tiamat when she reacted to his words, then try to give her a strong blow to the face that Tiamat caught without any difficulty. You also need to be really strong. But, Tiamat would use Issei's hand as support to bring his entire body onto his back in less than a second, as he stepped forward and flexed his knee. If they're both equally powerful, Tiamat would pull Issei's arm, causing the brunette's entire body to pass over hers and crash hard against the ground, causing her to vomit a little blood in the process. The one with the greatest technique and experience will be the winner. Issei froze when she saw how Tiamat's foot was practically already on her head but I pass within a couple of centimeters of his skin. In a tiny fraction of a second, she thought she had missed, but she realized she hadn't when she felt every fiber of her skin being blown away by a staggering blizzard that kicked Tiamat out, sending him flying until he smashed into the earth. Wallen spit out some saliva. Issei quickly got up with a bit of difficulty while wiping the trickle of blood that was coming out of his mouth. A small smile appeared on her face. She is extraordinary he thought to himself as he stared at her. Otherwise, Issei watched very carefully when Tiamat raised her index finger. If your opponent is much stronger than you, and he is just as good in their respective techniques and combat experience, you are simply finished. Issei dropped a nervous bead of sweat at Tiamat's rather cold sincerity. If the case is otherwise, you will tear it to pieces. A small mysterious smile would be drawn on Tiamat's face, causing him to look at her very carefully. But, if they are both equally powerful, and you have the clearer concepts, then you might wear yourself out a lot less than necessary to defeat him. You might even have a chance to defeat a stronger opponent with a good strategy, while the subject is not more intelligent and strategic than you regarding battles. Waste me less, Issei would ask with some intrigue. Tiamat would seriously position her hands on her hips. I'll give you an example. Let's assume that I am now using 100% of my power. But, if I use my experience and knowledge of techniques, Tiamat would give a small sly smile as she extended her palm towards Issei, causing the brunette to look at her with a sly smile. Big surprise. I would only need to use 50% to be able to defeat you. Even less, but in that case it would no longer be a battle to save energy, I would just be playing with you to make the thrill of a real fight last a little longer. I see. Issei exclaimed as she raised her arms with great emotion. Actually. I'm not even using my 1%, but I can't tell him that oh he'll be pretty disappointed. Tiamat would think with a little grace in his words. Tiamat would sharpen her gaze, making Issei visibly tense. Tiamat's outstretched palm would transform into a taunt as he invited him to face her. Come and attack whenever you want. I'll make sure to show you the difference in technique that exists between us. She didn't have to tell him twice. 
Issei rushed towards the beautiful woman and tried to lash out at her. Tiamat's eyes shone light blue as he saw how Issei's fists went against her in a very clear way. Right. Tiamat would lean her body to the side, completely avoiding him. His light blue eyes quickly ran to Issei's other arm, who was beginning to prepare a blow. Left. Tiamat smoothly dodged again with breakneck speed, leaving Issei genuinely surprised. Tiamat's eyes would flick to the right. Right. I dodged the blow again with no problems. Repeat. The dragon thought, this time not even seeing Issei's next blow, dodging her left hand even faster than the previous time. Her punches from her are super basic and easy to dodge, plus she doesn't know how to use a feint. Tiamat would think as he closed his eyes and continued to dodge without any problem. Even though it was super easy for Tiamat, Issei was totally shocked by Tiamat's display of power. She continued to dodge everything at a speed that blurred to her eyes. Added to the fact that she was using the maximum speed and power of hers in the punches, she was running out fast. Now, she could understand much better the word where and why she should avoid it. It's time to put pressure on him. Tiamat would think as he opened his eyes with a menacing air. He would dodge one of her blows with his usual normality, to then look at the left part of Issei's torso, indicating where he was going to stop her blow. Quickly, he began to prepare her fist to strike. Issei's eyes immediately caught Tiamat's intent, causing Issei to put his gauntlet in the trajectory to defend himself and counterattack. To the left, Tiamat's eyes narrowed with a cunning glint. To the right, Issei's eyes widened in shock and she began to writhe in pain as she felt Tiamat's left hand sink into the right part of her stomach. Tiamat took a couple of steps back as she waited for Issei to recover from the blow. That's called a feint. Remember that well. It's very basic but it could give you the trump card in a battle. But only use it when you're sure your opponent is overwhelmed by your moves. Also, you must exert incredible mental pressure, not only with your fake attack, but also with a sharp gaze that is projecting the place where the impact is going to hit, as if you were really going to hit there. Tiamat's gaze hardened a bit, causing Issei to have a small shiver down his spine. We'll also need to work on your punch variety. You suck. Issei clutched his chest when an arrow he had engraved, you suck, pierced his chest. A heavy stomp from Tiamat would snap Issei back to reality. Why do you have that face? We're not done yet. Issei would swallow deeply as he got into a fighting stance again. This time, I'll make sure I don't fall for one of his tricks again. Apparently, he'll be more attentive to feints, although that won't save him entirely. Fainting is just one of the many varieties I can use during combat, apart from my magic power. Tiamat would think calculatingly, and then go into combat position. If you don't come, then I'll go. Issei gritted his teeth in shock as Tiamat began to run towards him with a menacing posture. Without much time to think, he tried to counter his blow with another blow. Don't try to defend against a hit with another hit if you're not sure. Tiamat would take his forearm without any difficulty and deflect the blow to nothing, while slapping him hard in the stomach. Although he went open-handed, the blow was a bit devastating, causing Issei to vomit saliva. Tiamat didn't finish attacking like the previous times, passing his fist centimeters from his face and making small cuts in Issei's skin thanks to the strong blizzard that generated, besides that she almost flew away. She did not stop there and quickly mobilized and turned her back on Issei at great speed to then grab him from behind and hold him tightly by the neck with both hands, to then turn at high speed for a couple of turns until she finally caught him. He released and sent it to fly. I guess this is all. Tiamat would think out loud as she watched as Issei remained lying on the ground. But she was surprised when a large red glow came out of the gauntlet, indicating that she had achieved another multiplier. Could he still go further? Tiamat would think with her eyes slightly widened as she watched as Issei struggled to his feet. It's not that. He's evolving during the fight. That means he at least has to have a pretty clear motivation to continue fighting. And to progress, that's a very important thing. Issei would finally get up and yell loudly as he quickly ran towards Tiamat full of openings. Tiamat's eyes narrowed in disappointment. However, that motivation will not serve to make him strong in a short time generating a small blizzard on impact. Tiamat slowly withdrew her arm and used her body to support the unconscious Issei against her. The dragon gave him a small smile and reaffirmed her grip on Issei with a warm hug, generating a small blizzard on impact. 
Tiamat slowly withdrew her arm and used her body to support the unconscious Issei against her. The dragon gave him a small smile and reaffirmed her grip on Issei with a warm hug. But, even if I can't teach it to you, I know you'll end up learning it. And that's because you have the mentality of someone strong. Line jump. President, do you have any idea why we were called here? Kiba asked as he looked at the huge structure where the Grimori lived. That's right. Right now they were in hell. Rias snorted in annoyance. I already told my brother all the problems I have with Hyodo, so I don't think he'll call me to talk about my Sekiriote. Rias shook her head in some amusement. He was so pleased when I mentioned my new acquisition to him. But his smile quickly faded when I told him that my control over him is next to nothing. Akino would give one of her typical giggles. Don't worry, President. Hyodo is very grateful to you. I'm sure he will obey all of his orders without a second thought. Speaking of Issei, Asia would add. Didn't we have to look for him today? Rias would give a tired sigh. That's right. I was planning to do it now, but this unscheduled meeting just comes up. And best of all, we have a meeting today, and another one tomorrow morning. Rias would say with clear sarcasm in his last words. I think he will be able to survive another day without any problem. Kaneko would say indifferently as he waited for the maids to open the door. As expected, the doors opened. All of Rias's entourage, added to the redhead herself, bowed deeply to show the patriarch of the Grimoires their deserved respect. Hello, father. Forgive my insolence, but I would like to know why you called me so suddenly. Rias looked up, going completely blank as she realized that the one in front of her was not her father. When Rias fell silent so abruptly, the others raised their heads, only to get the same shocked expression from Rias. Ha ha ha. The laughter would sound creepy. Father huh. I like the sound of that. But just call me that when you're in bed with me, Rias. Quote ellipsis quote. Razor. Line jump. He was warm. His whole body. The noise of burning wood was heard in the background. Probably a campfire. It was all dark. Surely it was because he still hadn't fully woken up and hadn't opened his eyes. Oh, God, it was the only thing Issei could think when he felt a very comforting caress on his cheek. He felt great, and whoever he was, he didn't want it to stop. That hand, it was extremely soft and caressed him with great affection. Not even his mother had ever touched him like that, though that woman wasn't really a good example. He felt how his body was positioned, the space where he was. He was sitting. He could. Feel how his two legs were slightly wrapped with two others. She felt like her back was resting with great comfort on an extremely soft surface. She could also feel how another hand was holding his waist, hugging him lovingly and making his body stay closer to the other. She could feel how his head was lying on two huge mounds, soft, round, firm but soft at the same time. His head felt like it was on the best pillow on the planet. She could also feel someone resting his chin on top of his head, indicating how relaxed she was, just like him. Issei slowly opened his eyes, everything was completely white, and the discomfort he expected to have after his worst battle so far, mysteriously, didn't show up. Surely, that person had taken good care of him all these hours that he was unconscious. Finally, Issei's eyes adapted to the light and the first thing he could see were penetrating, happy, beautiful and calm light blue eyes that were looking at him very fixedly. That face, Issei thought subconsciously as he admired her. That face conveyed a great deal of calm, confidence, concern, affection, and appreciation. How could they trick this woman? A small sting arose in her heart when she thought those words. It's probably an answer she would never find, and if she did, she wouldn't understand it anyway. Are you all right? I think I was too hard on you for the first time. Tiamat would ask, still holding on to her previous expression, but her worry and guilt showed through her tone. Issei closed his eyes and smiled genuinely at Tiamat's concern, letting himself go for the moment and hugging her tightly. Tiamat's reaction was very different from the usual, since he reinforced her embrace on Issei's waist and she supported her chin more affectionately on top of the chestnut's head. To be honest, it was kind of hard. But I feel amazing. I don't know how you healed me but I appreciate it so much. I am glad to hear that. They both closed their eyes, enjoying the caresses and the bear hug that they were giving each other at that moment. Perhaps her endearment expression was getting a little out of hand. But would they really think about it?
Tiamat had not felt the warmth and affection of another person in a long millennium. Whereas Issei hadn't even experienced anything like that in his short life. They felt too good to walk away from each other. They liked that feeling of warmth throughout their bodies. They liked that another person showed them true affection. They simply wanted to experience the feeling of being loved by another person. But, even so, that strange heat that began to invade the entire body of both. That warmth that finally settled in their hearts was not a simple desire to get friendly affection. But they were both too comfortable to realize it right now. They just wanted to enjoy the moment, their closeness. What is it that motivates you to get stronger? Tiamat's question broke the extremely comfortable silence that had settled for several minutes. My motivation. I guess my president. Rias Gramori. Tiamat pursed her lips at the answer. Not only because he felt a small pang of jealousy that this woman is his motivation and not her, but also because he was a filthy devil. She gave me a second chance at my life, I want to become stronger to protect her. Oh her, and everyone I consider important to me. Like you. A practically imperceptible blush appeared on Tiamat's face while she looked at Issei's face, who was extremely comfortable and calm, sleeping on her two breasts. Issei chuckled a bit, making Tiamat raise an eyebrow in intrigue. Although for the moment, things will have to be the other way around between you and me, since you are much stronger at the moment. Tiamat looked up, a smile on her face. If Issei had been with his eyes open, he would have said that it was that genuine smile that Tiamat gave off once in a while, like hers when he told her that he would stay with her for a couple of days. Hum. I hum happily. I don't think you'll ever get over me. Shall we bet something? Issei asked with a small laugh at the end. Hum. Tiamat hummed happily again. If at some point you get over me, you can ask me whatever you want. Okay. Issei declared without any kind of malicious thought behind her, making Diedreg puff out her chest with pride again. So what do I have to promise? I ask with a small teasing tone. Never leave me. Issei's eyes widened in shock upon hearing Tiamat's declaration. She had a completely serious face, in fact, it seemed more like a threat than a request. But Issei knew that she wasn't like that, because he learned to see her eyes. And her eyes denoted sadness, loneliness, fear. Afraid that he will leave her alone, and that everything will be just as cold and silent and horrible as before. I promise, said Issei with a rather serious tone and without hesitating for even a millisecond. This made Tiamat's chest warm in a way he had never felt before. Now, nor ever. A lot of conflicting emotions erupted inside her chest and stomach because of Issei. But, she somehow found a method to show those feelings. She gave him a huge chuckle, showing her beautiful fangs. She had her eyelids closed, but the corners of her eyes were a little wet from her tears. Thank you. If Issei was already very surprised by Tiamat's smile, now he was even more surprised when he heard his tone so happy and really grateful from him. Line jump. Brother. Rias hit the table hard in great frustration. You got to be kidding. Rias would quickly look at his parents with the same expression. And you guys are okay with this. Rias' entourage only remained silent out of respect, although that didn't mean they agreed with what was happening. Calm down, Rias. I haven't finished declaring yet. The younger redhead would answer with a serious air around him. At this, Rias would just continue to listen. I agree to move up the wedding and celebrate it within a month but only with two conditions. Razor's stupid smile would completely fade after listening. What are those conditions, Sirzex? Calm down, Razor. It's something very simple. I would declare the now introduced Sirzex. My sister has the possibility of playing a rating game against you. And the second is that anyone who is interested in breaking into the wedding and taking Rias as a bride can do so, although said subject must be you one against one before he can take my sister's hand. A sharp silence filled the room for a few seconds. Razor was completely serious in that silence. But out of nowhere, the silence was broken by Razor's small laugh, which then turned into a laugh. Okay. I accept those conditions. He would declare Razor completely sure of his victory. Both in the first and in the second condition. Rias and her entourage looked at each other very seriously, seeing that they had a chance to get rid of Razor. Sirzex would get up from his chair making everyone stare at him. I think that's all for today. It's already very late, so rest well. Tomorrow we will agree on the date and time of the marriage, along with the rating game. They all nodded, 
satisfied with the outcome of the meeting. What Razor didn't know, was that his ego and pride played a trick on him. Line jump. Hey, don't you think they're taking too long? Tiamat would ask. Both were still in the same position as before, the only thing different were some blankets that covered them to get through the extreme cold of the night. Although internally, they loved that cold, since they snuggled even more with the other having the temperature below zero as an excuse. Maybe they'll come tomorrow, Issei would say with a sleepy voice. Damn it, I'm going to be here four days, and I still haven't gotten any familiar. Why the hell do all the familiars hate me, except the ones that are perverted? Issei rambled out loud, causing Tiamat to stare at him. She knew that these familiars were only attracted to people who had a great sexual appetite, although she preferred not to tell him so as not to embarrass him. A weak smile spread across Issei's face. Now that I think about it, it's not all that bad. She continued to ramble unconsciously. It's great to be able to spend another day, with you. Issei declared unconsciously, already collapsing from exhaustion and falling asleep with her head resting on Tiamat's fluffy breasts. Tiamat only looked at Issei for his last words. She watched him and watched him for a long minute. His light blue eyes shone with mystery. It was impossible to tell what she was thinking now. Until finally, I come to a conclusion. I think, I think if you were away from me for more than a day, I couldn't take it. Tiamat stated quietly, as he stopped caressing Issei's cheek and positioned his palm on the hand where Issei activated his gauntlet. His light blue eyes sparkled with longing for a brief second. Really, I couldn't take it. Issei's hand would shine a light blue color, while Tiamat's abdomen would shine at the same time with the same intensity and color. End of chapter. Chapter 7. Surprise after surprise. Issei slowly opened his eyes, everything was dark. The day before she had slept like never before, and her satisfied face was proof of that. All the memories of yesterday made him feel really happy. When he first met Tiamat, he had simply thought of escaping anyway due to the danger and emotional instability he presented. But now that he knew her better, he realized that she is a good woman with a rather strange character, but very nice, without a doubt. Unbeknownst to him and her, the two of them had become good friends in just four days. Surely it was due to the great loneliness that exploded in Tiamat after being without company for a millennium, and on Issei's part, well, from her, he had felt a lot of empathy for her, since they had gone through very similar things. I never thought I could sleep so well in a cave. Issei tried to stretch out his arms, realizing that one of them was stuck under something. Before she could think what was happening, the familiar smell and touch she received on her forehead from another forehead caused a small smile to break across her face. Slowly, but surely, she began to drag back the covers that covered her face, only to see how a large amount of beautiful light blue hair spread out in various directions as she pulled back the covers. Finally, she managed to withdraw it to the part of her face to see how Tiamat had her forehead pressed to hers while she slept with a very serious face, but with an aura of tranquility around her. Her long, Silky hair was scattered all over the makeshift bed, giving the dragoness quite a beautiful look. Tiamat frowned slightly when she felt how the cold began to invade her body, sticking her nose with Issei's. His arms went around Issei's back, giving her a strong delicate hug, seeking to snuggle her body against his as much as possible. Although Issei felt comfortable right now, he had a duty to get up. Hey, wake up, it's already dawn. Tiamat opened her eyes meeting Issei's eyes instantly due to their closeness. Will you go find your mistress? The dragon would ask, without moving an inch from her position. Issei noted that her tone seemed a bit off, and he obviously knew why. I promise I'll be back before you know it. Issei's face would become serious. But for now, I must catch up on my studies. Issei would look up from her with a small smile on her face. Now that I think about it, I don't know how I can dissuade Matsuda and Motohama and your parents and other people? Tiamat would ask with some intrigue. Issei chuckled dryly at her question. My parents must not have even found out about my absence, since my two best friends don't get along with them and they don't dare come to my house. As for the other people, to be honest, apart from my friends from the club, Matsuda and Motohama are the only people who know of my existence. I'm quite honored that I came across your existence. Issei was a bit surprised by Tiamat's words. Ordinarily, 
Such a comment could be taken as sarcastic, but the rare and occasional smile that appeared on Tiamat's face made it clear to her that she was not being sarcastic. Before Issei could respond to the sudden comment, Tiamat raised her face slightly towards the entrance of the cave, causing Issei to follow her with his gaze. Apparently we have visitors. I would say Tiamat with his typical apathetic expression. Wow. Those are the dragons that tried to kill me last time. Issei pointed discriminatingly, making the three dragons present a bit nervous as they remembered what had happened. What are you waiting for? Come in. Issei would declare with a toothy smile, causing the three dragons to quickly bow for his hospitality. This is my house, you know. Tiamat would say with her eyes blank when she saw how Issei invited her without asking her first. Line jump. The wedding will be in a month and 15 days. Sirzek's statement made everyone nodded seriously, except for Razor, who had a stupid smile on his face. The rating game. Rias would ask with clear impatience in his tone, almost jumping out of his chair. Sirzek gave his sister a delicate smile, signaling for her to calm down a bit. In two weeks, Kiba, Kaneko, Asia, and Akino looked at each other with slightly widened eyes. Two weeks. That's a very short time. They thought in unison. Okay. Rias would say, stopping abruptly, leaving everyone present a little surprised by his cutting attitude. Wait, Rias, we haven't even. I'm sorry father. Rias would interrupt while the rest of his entourage stood up. But if we only have two weeks, I can't waste any more time here. He would answer the redhead leaving the dining room at a brisk pace, followed by his entire entourage. Everyone present would just shake their head at his daughter, sister's attitude, while Razor crossed his arms with an arrogant smile on his face. She doesn't even have all of her pieces, this is going to be really fun, since the whole royal family will be watching as I squash that spoiled brat off. Razor would think with great certainty of her victory. President, what do you plan to do? She would ask Asia seriously as she followed closely behind her. First we have to look for Hyodo. In these two weeks I will squeeze him as much as possible so that he can become the best pawn in the underworld. Rias would say with a clear withering tone, something a bit inappropriate for her. Rias would stop abruptly and turn around with a seriousness palpable on his face. Same goes for us. We'll have to do our best to win the rating game. Rias would fixate on Asia making the ex-nun flustered by her gaze. Especially you, Asia. You're new as Hyodo, so you'll have to level up as quickly as possible. Your sacred gear is very important to me, and that's why I revived you. I know you won't let me down. Rias would declare with a small smile at the end, making the nun quickly nod. Do you think Issei will reach that level that you mentioned, President? Kaneko would ask, with no real concern in his words. Rias's gaze would become serious and a bit dark from the question. He is the Sekariote, one of the most feared weapons in the world. It is the least I can expect from my minion, considering his destructive and fearsome potential. But, if he fails, a malicious glint would cross his eyes. I'll make sure he suffers just like me. Line jump. Guar, wa, wiwira. She would exclaim the male dragon with a small smile on his face as they all shared the food at the campfire. He says it's too bad you're leaving. Tiamat would open his mouth a little to take a bite to his mouth, exposing his two nice upper fangs. Don't worry, I'll be back pretty quick. She would declare Issei with a small smile as she continued to devour the exotic fruits. Wow, I saw, I saw. He would declare the little dragon with a big toothy grin. She says that when you come back, she wants to play with you. Tiamat said as he threw the inedible part of the fruit into the fire. Take it for granted. She would answer Issei with a toothy smile on her face, as she repeated the action of Tiamat. Her smile quickly faded as she picked up her backpack from beside her. It's time. She would say herself as she gazed at Tiamat. Tiamat would quickly rise from the ground. Before you go, I'd like to tell you something. He would declare with his typical expression. Issei just nodded and walked to the entrance of the cave, while they were watched by the three dragons. What did you want to talk about? Issei would ask while he seriously looked at the horizon. Thank you. Issei looked at her, surprised by her simple word. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for showing me that I can still find happiness in life if I look for it. Thank you for being my friend. Tiamat would look at him, making a strong wind blow her beautiful hair. 
A big grateful smile appeared on Tiamat's face, making his small fangs visible again. Thanks for everything. Issei froze for a few seconds due to Tiamat's big beaming smile. When he reacted, he placed his right hand on his shoulder with a small reassuring smile on his face. I already said it before, but, I promise to come back as soon as possible. I still owe you dinner. Issei would answer with a big toothy smile. Tiamat would place her hand on top of Issei's lovingly, causing him to be slightly surprised by the gesture. His surprise grew disproportionately when he saw how a celestial glow appeared in his right hand at the same time that a glow of the same hue appeared in Tiamat's abdomen. With this, it will be much easier for us to communicate. Tiamat would say with a small smile. What is this? Issei would wonder while looking at the celestial mark on his hand. Doesn't it look like Tiamat's dragon form? Issei would think while he carefully looked at the mark. With this mark, both of us will be in communication all the time since we can talk to each other through a magic circle whenever we want. This will help us a lot when you want to come visit me, I would only have to use a little magic to create a teleportation seal, although I could also teleport to your position if you wish. It will also allow me to feel your emotions, knowing exactly when you are in danger. Issei slightly widened her eyes at what she heard. Tiamat shook her head, amused. You are the Sekariote. Surely many enemies will want to assassinate you and I will make sure to prevent it. Issei looked at the mark even more surprised. A single mark can do all that. Exact. Issei would look at her with great intrigue after her words. This mark is a demonstration of the trust that the two people who carry it have. This mark is known as the, family seal. A small blizzard passed between them, while they didn't say a word to each other. The only distinguishing thing between the two was Issei's completely shocked expression. W wait a sec. Issei finally broke the silence. Are you telling me, that you became my familiar, being a dragon, plus you're much stronger than me? He asked completely in shock, not quite digesting what was happening. Yes and what? Tiamat would ask with a raised eyebrow. Issei was further surprised by her simple answer. B but, you said that if a dragon becomes a familiar of another dragon, it is considered a disgrace among its kind. That's how it is. Tiamat would say as he nodded with a small smile on his face. Th then why? Because, Issei would be shocked beyond belief when Tiamat wrapped her arms around him very delicately and slowly, hugging him with great warmth and affection. Because you are my friend. He would whisper in her ear. Do I need another reason to do it? No. I don't know what to say. Issei would say as he returned the hug with the same intensity as Tiamat, unconsciously making the woman hug him even stronger. You don't need to say anything, just accept it. It's the least I could do after all you did for me. Tiamat would separate from the embrace a little to meet his eyes with great seriousness. I just have to tell you that this mark has one big flaw. Never let your arm be cut off, or we'll lose connection. Make sure you always have your gauntlet active throughout the fight to try and make sure nothing bad happens. And don't let it go. Tell no one, very few are aware of this weakness, and it would be best if it continued to be maintained that way, he would declare very seriously. Issei would nod seriously, knowing that it was something very delicate. After those words, Tiamat tightened the embrace a bit again, causing both of them to bump noses. Have a good trip, he would declare Tiamat fondly in his words. Thank you, was the only thing Issei said as he pulled away from the hug. She quickly turned around and held up her hand in farewell. Tiamat just kept looking at him for several seconds. Finally, he closed his eyes and gave a smile. It was incredible that Issei managed to get so many radiant and sincere smiles out of him in just one day. Definitely, he was very special to her. Tiamat cast an intrigued look at the three dragons who were watching her intently. Something happens, Tiamat asked, curious. The three dragons knelt in front of her, making Tiamat jump a little. We are sorry to have interrupted such an important moment when you were in bed, Dragon Queen. Disrupted. Tiamat would wonder aloud. We were just talking. We slept together because it's very cold at night. Don't misunderstand things. Tiamat would answer while an imperceptible blush appeared on his face. The three dragons would look at each other in confusion. Talking. But you were too close, practically invading each other's personal space, and you felt so comfortable with each other around. We heard you guys are friends, but it seems a little too close to me to be, 
just friends. The mother dragon spoke, causing the other two to panic a bit as they saw that she was practically defying Tiamat's word without realizing it. Tiamat lowered her head, shadowing her gaze. Because of this action, the other two dragons were terrified to death and were about to apologize to him. You're right, but I like being with him like this. I don't care what other people think. The three dragons were immensely surprised, and not by his words. It was when she raised her face, since she had a huge blush on her cheeks. Line jump. Finally we found you, Rias would say while giving a big tired sigh. How have you been? Issei would ask with a toothy smile as she approached her fellow demons. Fatal. Kaneko would answer simply, causing Issei to stop short and look at her in confusion, before turning her gaze to Rias, waiting for an answer. We couldn't look for you yesterday, because I had a meeting at my house. I'm sorry. Rias would answer with a slightly embarrassed tone, before becoming serious. The problem comes from what was dictated at the meeting. I've never told you until now, but I'm engaged to a man I don't love. Rias would declare, while he slightly lowers his head. I don't know what my older brother was thinking, but the point is that the wedding was brought up several months. Issei just lowered his head a bit not knowing exactly what to say. Is there, any way to cancel the wedding? She would finally ask herself, not trying to coddle Rias in vain. Rias's seriousness was completely erased and she gave a small smile. There is. Do you remember the explanation I gave you of the rating games? Issei would look up in a bit of surprise. Shall we play a rating game to break your engagement? But you still don't have all the pieces, Issei would clarify as she rubbed her hair in confusion. Rias just nodded with a smile. I may not have all the pieces, but the minions I have are very strong, or have impressive abilities. That obviously includes you, Issei. Issei just smiled at him seeing that he had a lot of trust in him. Rias's smile would drop a bit, making the whole atmosphere a little more tense. But nothing takes away from the fact that Razor's team is well built, and for that very reason it is among the best currently. We will have to train very hard these days. Especially you, Issei, since you have great potential, you just have to release it. That will be achieved with training, training, and more training. Rias' seriousness was quite palpable in his last words. I won't let you down, President. Issei would exclaim as she raised her fist with determination. By the way, how much time do we have? He would ask, slightly embarrassed for not having asked something so key from the beginning. Rias raised her hand denoting two of her fingers. Two weeks. I'll make sure you become the best pawn in two weeks. Issei would just nod vigorously. This was the chance to repay the favor that he owed so much to Rias for reviving him, and he intended to fulfill it at all costs. Not only because of that favor that he owed him, but because he himself knows that the only motivation he has to fight is to keep his friends away from danger, to keep them safe, to make sure nothing bad happens to them. What's the point of fighting if you can't fulfill the only real ambition you have to fight? Line jump. Yes, in the end it was what we had thought. They were delayed a day, because something very important came up. Issei would say in a low voice, making sure that the passersby wouldn't hear him talking alone while he went to school after being absent for three days. Okay. Did you tell him that I'm your familiar? Tiamat would ask from the other side of the small celestial magical circle that was being covered by Issei's hand. Not at the moment. I didn't find the moment to say it because of everything that happened. Issei would answer seriously, while she adjusted her suitcase so that it wouldn't fall off her shoulder. What exactly happened? Tiamat would ask with a clearly intrigued tone. Now I can't tell you, I'm coming to the academy. We'll talk later. Issei would whisper even lower so as not to be heard since there were many students on the small bridge that was in front of Kuo Academy. I understand, go well. The small magic circle disappeared, causing Issei to remove his hand from his ear with a small smile. Issei stood in front of the entrance as he looked at the academy with a small smile. Although it was only three days, it's good to be back. She would think as she took a step inside the academy. Hey eyes, eyes. Issei looked forward with a small drop of sweat when he saw how his two friends were running towards him. Issei's expression changed again as he got a closer look at them. What the fuck happened to their faces? Issei would ask while she watched with great expectation how her faces were somewhat inflamed and bandaged. Matsuda stopped in front of him while rubbing his bald head nervously. 
Well, it's just that you weren't around yesterday to stop the kendo club girls again. Motohama adjusted his glasses while looking at him very seriously. Don't change the subject. You know you owe us some explaining. Issei just gave a small sigh as he began to slowly move forward, being followed by his two best friends who were watching him very carefully. Line jump. Two weeks without going to the academy. Issei would yell, practically getting up from the couch. That's how it is. Rias would nod with a smile. We need to focus as much as we can on our training. Issei sat up, heaving a big defeated sigh. What will I make up for Matsuda and Motohama? He would wonder aloud. You do not have to worry about that. Rias would reply, making Issei look at her curiously. My family owns this school, so my brother has already invented a two-week curricular excursion for the occult club. No one will be suspicious. Issei patted his fist into his palm as he nodded in understanding. I see. I never should have doubted the president's preparations. Issei would say with conviction, making everyone look at each other with a little grace due to his words. President, you still haven't told us where we're going to go. Kiba would make the point of her while he watched her intently, with her typical smile marked on her face. It's a big house in the middle of the forest that belongs to my family. It's on the outskirts of Kuo and a bit far from civilization, so we won't have any problems using our powers. Rias would answer as she got up from her seat and looked at them seriously. The limo should be about to arrive, let's go. They all nodded and followed his mistress. Line jump. He didn't lie when he said it was a big house. Issei would think as he looked at the huge three-story house in front of him, completely surrounded by trees, and some really tall rock formations that were nearby. They all entered the house and settled into their respective rooms. The house inside was somewhat luxurious, but not exaggerating either. Of course, Issei was sure that the comfort of this place was far superior to that of his house. After everyone got settled, Rias summoned them to the table to explain the different workouts they will do during the week. Asia, I need you to focus on your magic training. You must learn to channel your magic freely, that will make your sacred gear much more effective when you need to heal someone. Rias gave Issei a look. The same goes for you, Issei. I know you barely have any magic power, but when you manage to charge a good amount of power-ups in your body I'm sure your magical reserves will also skyrocket, as will your physical strength, resistance and other qualities. Quote. Issei just nodded in understanding as he continued to listen. In addition to learning how to use your magic, you should also train your fitness and stamina as much as possible. Rias would frown slightly with a penetrating gaze. I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to be hard for you. I know you like training, but I'm also sure you've never done such an exhaustive training. She Issei just sweat cold while she listened to her seriously without saying a word. In the meantime, you, Rias would look at Kaneko, Kiba, and Akino. I guess I don't need to tell you where you need to improve. The three just nodded, knowing what they should do. Rias turned her gaze back to Issei with a small smile. If you need help with physical training, don't hesitate to ask Kaneko, since she is the one who specializes the most in that subject. I do not think that it's necessary. Issei answered with a smile on her face, surprising everyone present. Issei clenched her right fist tightly, causing a celestial dragon mark to appear on it. I'm sure if my familiar helps me with the training, there won't be any problems. Familiar. They all asked confused. Issei just nodded with a goofy smile on his face. That's how it is. Issei would put one foot on the table dramatically. He's incredibly strong, and I know he'll be able to help me with my training. His name is. Kaneko would hit him hard in the stomach, causing Issei to writhe in pain. Don't put your feet up on the table. It's disrespectful. The albina would glare at him while she looked at him with her typical expression. If you want to train with your familiar, I have no problem. But remember that if you need help, don't hesitate to ask me. I just hope it's not an excuse not to train hard, Issei. He would add Asia with a dangerous look on her face, making Issei immediately flustered. How do you think, Asia? You will see it with your own eyes. Issei would reply as she rubbed her hair nervously. Will your familiar be able to help you with magic as well? I ask Rias with great intrigue. Yes. She has a great deal of magical power, and I'm sure she could teach me various tricks. She is a woman. Akino would ask with some intrigue. She. Wow. Wow. 
she must be pretty human-like if you managed to figure out her gender. Actually, it wasn't that hard, Issei would reply as he rubbed his cheek with a small blush as he remembered Tiamat's beautiful face, along with her very feminine anatomy. Can you introduce us to that familiar? Rias would ask with great curiosity. Well, that, Issei lowered his head, embarrassed. She hates devils, she won't want to be among you, unless it's an emergency. They all looked at each other with great curiosity. But you're a devil. Kiba would finally speak, breaking the silence. Issei rubbed his hair somewhat embarrassed. That has an explanation. She said that I was special because of Diedrag's power. That makes me very different from the average devils, according to her. They would all look at each other with a slight frown at his words, but they wouldn't say anything. I said something wrong. Issei asked curiously seeing that everyone was more serious than normal. It's nothing. You can start your training now. Rias would answer with a small smile, and then see everyone. I want everyone here before midnight. Yeah. Everyone answered in unison, leaving Rias and Asia alone at the table for their magical training to begin. Issei and Kaneko nodded to each other as a parting gesture, just like they did with Akino. Issei. Kiba put a hand on her shoulder. If you want to have a friendly fight against a swordsman, don't be ashamed to ask me. Issei would turn around, then make a small bow. Thank you, Prince Charming. I'll keep that in mind. Kiba just sweated from his partner's attitude. Having said goodbye to Kiba, Issei was already alone. Wait a minute. Issei would think with a slight blush of embarrassment on his face. How do I summon Tiamat if I can't use magic? Issei placed his hand on his chin as he thought with great fervor. I know. He would declare her loudly as she snapped her fingers. Issei tightly closed his eyes, while his mind visualized something. The image of the girl from the ring appeared in Issei's mind, causing him to give a small cry in great fear as he covered his face. I can never get over that movie, Issei would think with a big sigh at the end. Something happens. Issei smiled when he saw that his plan had worked, the small magic circle that appeared in his ear and the beautiful voice of Tiamat that was heard on the other side was proof of that. I felt like for a second you were completely terrified. I just imagined something that scares me. It's the only method I could think of to communicate with you. Issei would explain as she rubbed her hair nervously. You need something. I would like you to teleport me there. I need help with the training. Really? But you left a few hours ago. Although the sentence seemed like it was a rebuke, Tiamat's tone was clearly emotional. Well, it's not just any training. I'll explain everything when I'm there. Okay. Tiamat would answer, causing a celestial magic circle to appear at Issei's feet, disappearing into the chestnut of the place. Line jump. So your love mistress is on the ropes, huh? Tiamat would declare seriously while he played with his hair, after having listened to all of Issei's explanation. Issei nodded. That's why I'm here. With what happened yesterday, it's clear to me that you have a great level and that you can help me improve quickly. That way, I'll fulfill my duty to the president. He would answer seriously, seeing how Tiamat studied him with her eyes. Okay. Issei got a big smile at Tiamat's answer. But you won't be able to win just with the conviction of doing the favor you owe your mistress, and the feeling of keeping all your friends safe. Issei would look at her with great intrigue over her words. Do you know why I say that? Issei would just shake his head when he didn't find an answer. Tiamat would fold her arms across hers, giving her a penetrating look. Do you find it fun? Hey. Issei didn't know how to respond to such a poorly formulated question. Does it seem fun to fight, if you have the goal of returning the favor to your mistress and protecting your loved ones? Well, I don't know whether to call it fun, but as long as I have those goals I'm sure every fight will be fun. Issei would say with great determination in his words. So what are you going to do when it's not fun anymore? Issei was a bit surprised by Tiamat's question, but he quickly answered her with a smile. I'll make it fun. Will it be fun even though you fail to complete either of your two ambitions? Issei was surprised by Tiamat's sharp question, which did not allow him to find a coherent answer. Although such ambitions make your thrill for combat incredible, if you fail once, you are lost forever. Because you failed to fulfill your mistress's favor, and you also failed to protect your loved ones, as the woman herself will be damned. For an arranged marriage, not to mention what could happen to your devil friends. After that, 
will you still find some kind of excitement to continue training? Will you still find fighting fun? Issei just lowered his head, not knowing what to answer. So far, she hadn't considered the option of losing, and she had never really thought about how it might affect her if it ever happened. Don't worry. Issei would be a bit surprised by Tiamat's words. Although I have only tested your strength for one day, I am sure that you have a feeling that you have not yet discovered, a feeling that I know very well. If you had faced Rainair without the desire for revenge that gnawed at your conscience, then you would have discovered at that time. Tiamat would change his serious expression to a small, somewhat commanding smile. Now, you only train to take down strong opponents who will go after your loved ones. Tiamat would widen his eyes a little with a gleam of excitement in them. Only when you face off against them, do you see all the fruit of your training. End of chapter. Chapter 8. The Crushing Technique, Dragon Shot. 500. Issei would exclaim with great exhaustion, sprawling on the floor after completing the push-ups. Tiamat was by his side, watching with great care that he performed all the exercises correctly. For tomorrow, the number will increase by 25 and so on, until the rating game arrives. Ash looked up in horror. Are you kidding? Do I look like I'm joking? Issei swallowed hard when he saw Tiamat's completely serious expression. B but. I've never done so many repetitions in a single day before. Couldn't that affect my health? Issei would ask while comical tears came out of her face, adding to the tremor of her entire body. No. Tiamat would respond curtly, causing Issei to bow his head in defeat. Remember that you are no longer a human. It is practically impossible for your muscles to tear from doing such simple exercises. The only thing that will overwhelm you will be the intense and overwhelming fatigue that you will feel every day. I don't know if I really wanted to hear that answer, Issei would reply as a depressive aura came out around him. Tiamat raised an eyebrow at this. Then why do you ask? Tiamat just shook her head. Whatever. Now, I'd like to have a little showdown with you. Though I'll give you an advantage, Tiamat would put her hands in her pockets. I won't attack. If you're not going to attack me, what's the use then? Issei began to get up with great difficulty. It would be in vain to hurt you. The idea is to improve your speed and reaction. Having your muscles so fatigued, it's the perfect time to do it. Tiamat would reply, resisting the urge to laugh at Issei's condition. Understood. Issei would be standing although her body would be shaking with great intensity. He could practically feel his muscles screaming for him to stop trying. A few seconds passed, making Tiamat look at him strangely as he did nothing. You know you can start now, right? Issei just nodded with difficulty as his face turned purple. I I know. B but I can't move. Tiamat just gave a small sigh and looked at the sky. We'll have to shorten the time of this training, or else it won't give us time to practice magic at least for today, he'll surely come much earlier in the next few days. Tiamat watched with some amusement as Issei had just managed to take the first step. But, no matter what the reason is, he's always fun a interesting to have around. Line jump. Tiamat would dodge one blow very easily, only to take the other one like nothing. She wasn't really doing any damage to him, so she wasn't really concentrating on moving. In fact, right now, I was much more focused watching the sunset. Let's stop this for today. After Tiamat's words, Issei practically fell to the ground from the force of gravity that she felt was much heavier than normal. Issei was breathing heavily, while sweating non-stop. More than two hours with this, I felt like I was going to die. Issei would declare, gasping because of his irregular breathing. Now, we will try to unleash your magic. Issei looked at Tiamat completely pale. Don't worry. He would quickly add. Magic does not require physical training, but mental training. Issei would breathe a sigh of relief. Saved. Tiamat gave him a small teasing smile. I will not be sure. Issei looked at her with confusion at her words. You need a great deal of concentration to find your magical reserves. Mental exhaustion could be just as exhausting as physical exhaustion. It's even worse, as you tend to pass out much more easily. Not only when you're seeking to master it, but also when your magical reserves are about to run out. Tiamat would give him a serious look, indicating that he was not joking. That means that if you mismanage your magic reserves, you could pass out in the middle of combat and you can't do anything about it. Coincidentally, 
You have incredibly poor magic reserves, do you know what I'm getting at? Issei just nodded seriously, standing up with difficulty. Would it be better not to use my magic? A mysterious gleam would run through Tiamat's eyes, along with her mysterious little smile. I never said that. Even if your magic reserves are poor, it doesn't mean you can't create good magic attacks. In fact, when you learn how to release your magic reserves, I would like to teach you a good attack. Before Issei could ask what attack it was, a voice interrupted them. Excuse me, can you let me say something, Tiamat? It's really important. Diedrag's voice would echo from the gauntlet, causing Issei to look at him in surprise and Tiamat seriously. The dragon only remained silent for a few seconds, meditating on her answer. He finally nodded, giving permission to Diedrag. Buffers not only increase your physical strength, agility, speed, and stamina. They also increase your magic reserves in the period of time that the buffs are active. The problem is that your magic reserves are very low, and the buffs would only be effective if they accumulate non-stop. Although your training is helping you to release more and more power without fainting, there will come a point where you will need to focus more on your sacred gear in order to continue evolving. Could you help him with that? Tiamat. Pipe quote. Issei looked very closely at Tiamat after Diedrag's speech. She lowered her head, placing a hand on her chin. Impossible. Issei looked at Tiamat in great amazement at her response. I remind you that the sacred gears were created in the last millennium, and I was locked in on myself during that period. Tiamat would look up from her with some shame. In short, I have no idea how sacred gears work. Her gaze became serious again. But thanks to you, Issei has a small percentage of our kind in her soul. I can teach her a few techniques of our kind along with the rigorous training any supernatural being who wants to become strong should go through. I agree. Diedrag would answer instantly. He still needs to go through some arduous training for him to start worrying about his sacred gear's potential. Therefore, we shouldn't worry about it for now. Pipe quote. Did you want something else, underdeveloped lizard? Tiamat would ask seriously, though the amused air around him broke his seriousness. No. After those words, Diedrag could be heard muttering some bad words under his breath for a few seconds. Tiamat sat down in front of Issei, making the brunette a little confused. We'll start right here. Training inside the cave would be counterproductive. It's a bit noisy outside my house, so it makes the job a little more difficult, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. It will take you a couple more days awaken your magic, but thanks to this you will get more accustomed to mental exhaustion, and therefore you will know more exactly when you are close to your limit. Issei just nodded and settled in like her. Now, she closes your eyes, and puts her hands together, leaving a small hole in the center. Tiamat carefully observed how Issei followed all the steps. Look for the magical power inside your body. Try to visualize it as much as you can between your hands. Do not get distracted at any time. After his explanation, Tiamat remained completely silent, studying Issei with her eyes. So the seconds passed. So the minutes passed. The only noises that were heard were from nature. After an hour, Tiamat watched carefully as a small purple dot appeared between Issei's hands. Right after that, the purple dot disappeared and Issei started to stagger sideways with great exhaustion. Finally, he ended up passing out. Tiamat let Issei fall onto her shoulder, before hugging him affectionately. You did well for your first time, Tiamat would say with a relaxing voice, bringing Issei's body closer to hers, making the hug very passionate. Sorry to interrupt the moment. Tiamat opened her eyes with a small start. He never really thought that Diedrag shouldn't necessarily sleep when Issei did. But there is something I should talk to you about. In private. Pipe quote. Make it quick. Tiamat's tone was clearly displeased. When you said that Issei was special, what exactly did you mean? Tiamat was somewhat surprised by the question. My doubts were completely confirmed when you mentioned that you had no idea about the sacred gear, adding the fact that nobody, with the exception of Albion and me, knew about these effects. So, why do you say that Issei is special, if didn't you know that demonic corruption didn't affect him? Pipe quote. Tiamat rested her chin on Issei's head, thinking of an answer. Because he has gone through things similar to mine, even worse, and even so, he was able to continue living without any type of problem. It is true that he still has sequelae that I don't know if they could ever heal, but he is not hindered by them he moves on with his life. So, 
I asked myself, if he lived through something worse and he can get over it, why can't I? I know that dragons feel much more than humans because they have a much greater trigger of emotions than yours. But even so, Issei served as an example for me. Even if things don't turn out the way I want, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. A small smile would appear on Tiamat's face. If you were the second chance in my life, I could say that Issei is the third. But unlike the other two, he knew how to understand and support me at all times, even though he only met me four days ago. And thanks to him, I also realized that I did wrong many times. Not only for me, but for others as well. Diedreg was visibly surprised by that last comment. Tiamat gave a small sigh. I can never forget how I felt when you rejected me, therefore I will never forgive you, but now I realize it tells me that I acted like a crazy deranged in these thousand years. I'm sorry. A somewhat uncomfortable silence appeared between the two for a few seconds. I don't accept your apology. Tiamat would be surprised by the answer. You have killed many of my bearers, just because of your madness. In my case, I will never be able to forgive you either. But I am not Issei. Tiamat would widen her eyes at the last words. I would like to stay as far away from you as possible, but Issei is my carrier. He is the one who decides who will be part of his circle, and from his attitude and thoughts, I am sure that you are at the top of that list right now. A small blush appeared on Tiamat's face at Diedreg's words. Still, that doesn't answer the question I asked you earlier. Pipe quote. Tiamat buried her face in Issei's neck tenderly, in an attempt to cover her blush. Everyone would think he's special just because he's the bearer of Diedrake. But to me, Issei is special in other ways. He made all kinds of emotions I haven't felt in a millennium ago come back in big waves. Happiness, joy, fun, sympathy. Ah as far as I'm concerned, he's not special for having a celestial dragon. He's special, because he has all those qualities that I mentioned a moment ago. Tiamat would tighten her embrace a little more, making Issei smile in their dreams. He is my dragon of light. Diedreg was completely shocked by her last words. Dragon of light, is an ambiguous term that was used when dragons were at their peak, Diedreg thought with great surprise. This term referred to the dragons that descended from the sun to bring peace to the broken hearts of other dragons. Obviously, these are just stories. Diedreg's eyes widened. But, for her to say that, so, are you telling me that he's special to you, because he manages to make you feel great? Pipe quote. Tiamat further buried her face in Issei's neck, covering her growing blush. That's how it is. It would be Tiamat's simple answer, leaving Diedre doubtful. Why do I feel this way? He would think Tiamat, because of how his heart was beating more and more passionately, adding to the fact that the great amount of beautiful emotions that were stirring the pit of his stomach. I'm just saying how it makes me feel, is there something weird about that? Okay. I get your point. Diedre would say seriously, ending the conversation. I don't think she feels anything more for my mate. If so, she'd be acting crazy, just like before. I would think Diedre seriously. Diedre would remain silent for a few seconds, then frown completely with great seriousness. Although, he made me see that I did wrong many times. I feel it. Tiamat's words struck Diedreg's mind again. She's definitely not the same as before. And all of that is thanks to Issei. Diedreg would think seriously. Besides, they're always so close, it's really weird. Finally, Diedreg would shrug with a bored look on her face. I guess time will tell. Line jump. After several minutes, Issei would finally wake up with a huge headache. Quickly, she tried to put a hand to her head to ease the pain. As she raised her hand, it was suddenly impeded by Tiamat's head, which was resting on her shoulder. Seeing this, a small pained smile broke out on Issei's face, causing him to switch targets. Her brunette placed her hand on top of Tiamat's head, caressing it lovingly. This reminds me of when I woke up in the morning, Issei would think as he watched Tiamat sleeping peacefully, sitting on top of his legs. I always saw dragons as a fearsome, imposing and terrifying being. But, it never crossed my mind that they could also be beautiful, Tiamat was woken up by Issei's voice. Wake up already, Issei asked with a smile, as she continued stroking her hair. Obviously, she hadn't realized that the last words she had said were out loud. Tiamat was only looking at him penetratingly for a few seconds, making Issei a little nervous. 
I said something wrong. Issei wondered out loud. Tiamat quickly denied. Not at all. I was just thinking that you did a good job today. He would clear the dragon. Getting up and holding out his hand for Issei to get him up. Thank you. Issei exclaimed with a toothy smile on her face. He glanced at the clock suddenly, and his eyes widened. Shit. I have to go back now. Oh they'll kill me. Tiamat lowered her head a bit, causing Issei to look at her in confusion. Can't you stay? Issei was surprised by Tiamat's sudden question. Issei placed a hand on Tiamat's shoulder comfortingly, making the dragon look into his eyes. I'm sorry but I cannot. He responded pitifully. But don't worry. We'll see each other first thing tomorrow morning. Tiamat's typical expression changed to a small smile. Okay. She positioned her hand on top of Issei's comforting grip, before creating the magic circle. Finally, Issei disappeared with a huge toothy grin, leaving Tiamat all alone. The woman stayed for a couple of seconds touching her shoulder, and then looked into her cave. It was all completely empty and dark, as it always has been. But those four days, those four days were really exciting. And for some reason, what she liked the most in those four days was the night. Specifically, sleeping with Issei at night. Unfortunately, tonight and the ones that follow cannot be like that. And that was something that bothered him a lot. Tiamat hugged herself. Why is her body so warm and comfortable? Tiamat wondered, raising an eyebrow in the process. She began to enter the cave slowly. With each passing second, her face was getting more and more flushed. Am I really beautiful? Tiamat would think when remembering Issei's words. Line jump. It's taking time. Rias would give a tired sigh, seeing that Issei was the only one who hadn't arrived. There's still time, President. Kiba would say, looking at the clock that indicated how long it was until 10.30. If he doesn't arrive in five minutes, I'll kill him. Kaneko would declare, looking at the food on the table with a great appetite. Everyone would hear the noise of the door, making them turn their heads. Everyone widened their eyes in shock. Sorry I'm late. I fell asleep for a few minutes. Issei would say with a smile on her face. Her body was completely sweaty, as were her clothes. He was leaning against the door frame, because he could barely stand up. The first to change her surprised look was Rias, who gave him a smile. From what I see, I don't need to worry about your training. Issei would just answer her with a smile, making everyone else nod in approval, indicating that they agreed with her mistress. Line jump. How do you feel today? Tiamat asked with her arms crossed, watching as Issei was stretching her muscles to begin. Fine. Issei blinked in surprise as he realized that he felt fine. Quickly, he began to touch every muscle in his body in great surprise. Too good, actually. It's like I didn't do anything yesterday. You see it. Issei looked at Tiamat with intrigue. That's one of the many differences between a human body and a demon body. A somewhat terrifying smile appeared on Tiamat's face, causing Issei to have a chill throughout his body. That means we can intensify the training more and more, without worrying about your health. Before Issei could rebuke, Tiamat reached out for him just at the same time a magic circle appeared on the spot. She reached her hand into the magic circle, and from it began to pull out a sword that was made entirely of ice. A large amount of cryogenic steam was emitted around her giving her a menacing aura, though her appearance was quite normal. To start today, I would like you to learn how to dodge thrusts. At least the most basic ones. Tiamat would throw the sword and catch it multiple times. To be honest, I'm not good with swords. But at least it will help you a little. Issei just swallowed nervously when Tiamat looked at him with an imposing shine in her eyes. I know you do all this to help me. But your workouts are brutal. Issei would think starting to break out in a cold sweat as Tiamat slowly approached him. Line jump. Issei dodged a downward thrust with great difficulty, leaping back. He could see how the edge of the sword grazed his nose, practically freezing his nostrils. What the hell is up with that sword? It barely grazed me. Issei would think with his eyes widening as he could not see how a simple touch had frozen almost all of her nose. I don't have time to think about it. Issei would think while he tried to stop panting from exhaustion, drying his face. Her legs were shaking like jelly. It's been three hours without a break. It moves so fast that if I react a thousandth late, I feel like I could snap in two. Issei tensed as Tiamat put her right foot in front, charging a sword attack from him. 
A second later, Issei lost sight of her for a moment, causing a small blizzard to kick up Tiamat's previous position. Issei gritted his teeth when the dragon appeared in front of him practically out of nowhere, as she had been doing for these three hours. Issei felt a strong tug on both of his legs. Shit. My legs aren't responding. Issei closed his eyes tightly when he saw how the sword was going to cut off his head. Just when he was an inch from his neck, the attack suddenly stopped, creating a small blizzard that nearly knocked Issei to the ground. The brunette opened one of her eyes in confusion when he noticed that her head was still attached to her body. I guess that's your limit. Issei felt how Tiamat placed his hand delicately on his nose, healing the wound and thawing it. Tomorrow I'll go a little faster. He would clear the dragon, taking a couple of steps away, while he began to play with her sword, throwing it and catching it with one finger. Before you take a break, I'd like you to do one more thing. Issei looked at her with special attention. I would like you to do three thrusts with my sword. She stopped playing, taking it by the handle and looking at him with her typical seriousness. Three thrusts. Issei wondered out loud. Well, at least it's something simple. Issei would shrug with a smile. Tiamat only smirked at him at his words. Then, Tiamat threw the sword at Issei's feet, causing the brown-haired man to yell in surprise as a crater formed from the weight of the sword. Let it be four instead of three. Issei got up with a bit of difficulty and looked at the crater where he was standing with his eyes rolling. I should have figured it out. Line jump. Leave it for today. I would order Tiamat, arriving with some fruits to eat. Issei would drop the sword as delicately as possible so it wouldn't create another crater on the spot. Damn, he would say with great exhaustion. I could barely lift it twice. I didn't expect you to make it the first time. Tiamat answered sitting down in front of Issei to share the food. The brown-haired man just rolled his eyes at his comment. Then we will do the same as yesterday, but adding 25 to each exercise. He would declare Tiamat quite naturally, eating his fruit calmly. Also with the legs, Issei asked nervously. They still haven't fully recovered. Tiamat only nodded. When I say everyone, it's everyone. The dragon gave him a somewhat imposing look, making Issei a bit scared. Finally. Her gaze softened and she gave a small sigh. I know I'm too hard on you. But I'm only hard because I want to make sure you get strong. Tiamat would look down with some sadness. I don't want to have to worry when you're not with me. She looked up from her suddenly, a tender look on her face. I'm not saying you should spend all your time with me. She would quickly add. The problem is your position. You are the wielder of the Welsh dragon, and I am sure you will run into many powerful enemies. Tiamat's eyes widened slightly as Issei beamed at her and took her free hand fondly. I understand perfectly. You don't need to explain it to me. Issei would squeeze Tiamat's hand a bit, causing a small discharge of emotions to hit the dragon's chest. Omitting all of the above. It's nice to know that there is someone who cares so much for me. Tiamat got a little carried away by her emotions, giving Issei a sweet smile. He returned her handshake, showing her affection for him. Time skip. Nine days had passed. Issei spent almost all of his time with Tiamat, although they only focused on training, so they rarely struck up a conversation. There were a few days when Issei couldn't finish certain exercises, but considering the constant sum of numbers in his repetitions it was somewhat understandable. On the last day, Issei had managed to perform four thrusts with the ice sword, and he also managed to perform all the exercises successfully after two days without being able to finish them. Considering that 11 days ago he started with 500 of each, it's quite an achievement that he can complete 750 in so few days. Regarding his magical power, he hadn't managed to get too far. Now, the 12th day of training began. Therefore, there were two days left for the rating game. Issei had completed the first series of training, so he was already on his little break, eating something along with Tiamat. Phew. Issei would give a big snort, slapping her stomach. It's impressive that simple fruits can be so delicious. Tiamat just nodded, agreeing. Which exercise will you start with when your break is over? The dragon would ask, opening her mouth wide to take a bite of the fruit, denoting her cute little fangs. Issei would put a hand to his chin as he thought carefully. Hmm, she was planning to start with some squats. Guar. Their conversation was interrupted when they saw how the dragons they had met before were approaching them. How long? Friend. Issei would reply, 
giving the smaller dragon a small smile. The little dragon just nodded with a smile. Guar, waver, B, bar. She said she came to keep her promise. She wants to play with you. Tiamat would serve as translator while he continued to eat without paying much attention. War. The little dragon touched Issei's face with her paw, making Issei look at her confused. You are stained. To play, you must remove the stain by staining another person who has not passed it on to you. I would translate Tiamat simply. Issei quickly fixed his gaze on the dragon pope, causing him to flinch a bit at his gaze. The brown-haired man made a quick leap towards him, which was dodged without much trouble by the dragon. Issei smiled defiantly seeing that he was faster than he thought at first. At this time, Tiamat found the game interesting. More than anything, because of Issei's look. Remember that in an hour you must resume your training. Issei would just nod, not taking his eyes off the dragon, who was beginning to feel a bit nervous at his intensity. Issei made another sudden jump again, being dodged again by the dragon. In less than a second, they began a great chase around the entire cave, and a part of the forest. I guess you didn't need the rest. Tiamat thought with an amused smile on his face, seeing how Issei tried to reach the dragon without success. The other two dragons were laughing at their interaction. Line jump. Tiamat's eyes sparkled with excitement as she saw that a small purple orb had spawned in Issei's hand. Issei widened his eyes when he felt something strange between his hands, giving a cry of surprise when he saw the small orb. Suddenly, almost all of her breath disappeared as she felt a large amount of her energy drain away. Tiamat quickly grabbed his shoulders. That's almost all your magical reserves. Try putting half of it back inside you to take that feeling away. I declare Tiamat with great earnestness. Issei just nodded, closing his eyes again with great concentration. After that, the small 6cm orb became a 3cm one, causing Issei to snap his eyes open when she felt the energy return inside her body. So, this is magic, said Issei with great seriousness in her look. Tiamat watched him carefully. Aren't you happy? After 12 days, you can finally wake her up. Issei looked down in disappointment. I don't know, he's really small. I doubt he could make anything interesting out of this. Don't worry. Issei looked up from her in a bit of surprise, seeing Tiamat's smile. Tomorrow I would like to teach you a deadly technique that requires very little magic power. With your current magic, you would be able to throw one of them. Tiamat would narrow her eyes boldly. But, with your power-ups, you'd be able to use one without feeling the mental exhaustion. Issei could feel how a small shiver ran through his entire body. Not only because of the new technique that he would learn, but also because of the fact that he would use his sacred gear. That's right, Issei hadn't used his sacred gear at any time during his training, so he had no idea how many augmentations he could perform right now. I can't wait until tomorrow, Issei would think with a flash of excitement in his eyes. Line jump. Octiva 2 sacred gear. Issei just nodded. A small flash of red encircled her arm, revealing the gauntlet. Issei looked closely at Tiamat waiting for the next instructions. Libera to do's Los Amentos. Boost. The word echoed through the gauntlet for two long minutes, with a slightly slow continuity. Finally, the counter stopped when it reached 35. 15 more than last time. Tiamat nodded to herself. It's pretty good. Issei nodded in agreement in amazement. In his first month he had managed to improve his limit by 20. But now, he barely spent 12 days training with Tiamat and the limit had almost doubled. Listen and observe carefully. Tiamat raised one of his arms with her open palm, pointing to a mountain in the distance. Aim towards your target with the hand that you will launch the attack. After that, concentrate a small amount of magic in the palm of your hand. But think that you will fight a dragon attack. The underdeveloped lizard will do the rest of the work. Issei would just nod and imitate Tiamat's movements. After a second, a small red orb appeared in her hand, emitting a small sonic sound that was almost inaudible. Issei looked at the orb with some disappointment. That amount is fine. Issei was shocked by Tiamat's words. I don't think you need more magical power to finish off your next opponents. Remember that your reserves are very limited. Issei would again look at the small red orb suspiciously. But, trust me, Issei only observed the small smile that Tiamat was giving him causing his doubts to dissipate almost instantly. Now let it go. 
Issei looked at the mountain that lay in front of him, and took a deep breath, easing his thoughts to release the attack. I really didn't expect it to do much. Dragon shot. Diedrag's voice echoed through the place, being followed by the small orb that transformed into a huge and strong lightning that was fired against the mountain, completely destroying its top. Issei was just opening and closing his mouth in complete shock. He couldn't find the words. Tiamat could only watch with great amusement how she was acting. I told you it would be a good attack. Can I do five more attacks? Issei would finally speak, with little stars in his eyes. Tiamat crossed her arms and nodded. Though, with just one of those attacks you'd be able to defeat a high-class devil without much difficulty. You'd just have to make sure you hit it. Issei looked at the gauntlet with great admiration. Tomorrow will be the last day of training, so I would like to change the routine just for that day. Issei watched Tiamat with bated breath. What will we do? Tiamat would place both hands on her hip, giving her a commanding smile. We will have a match. One on one. You will use your sacred gear and do your best to defeat me, as if I were your enemy. Issei just gritted his teeth a bit at the statement. He didn't have a good experience fighting her. Your power may have increased considerably. But if you don't test it once during a match prior to the rating game, it won't do much good. Issei just looked at her seriously, without saying a word. Although every fiber of his body was screaming that he was going to suffer a lot, something inside of him was making him emotional. He didn't know what that something was, but he liked it. Line jump. Tiamat would be dodging all punches and kicks with great ease and technique. Damn, I can't get a hit. Issei would think, gritting his teeth in anger. In one of the many blows that Issei tried to hit, Tiamat ducked to avoid a punch that grazed her light blue hair. Not a second later, Tiamat had stuck her fist into Issei's stomach, causing the brunette to vomit a little blood, adding to the fact that he was thrown backwards by the blow. Since they were fighting outside, this time there was no wall to stop him from sliding, so he only stopped a couple of meters behind. Issei was breathing heavily as he wiped the blood that was dripping from his mouth. After these six hours without her moving a muscle, she has given me the first blow. I can't believe that with just one blow she can hurt me so much. Issei would think with great admiration. Without a doubt, my teacher is someone really strong. Issei would stop breathing heavily, outlining a small mysterious smile on her face. With that in mind, Issei would raise her gauntlet towards Tiamat, making the dragon a bit surprised. I think I'll be able to use everything in one attack. A large red ball covering the entire palm of her hand suddenly appeared, causing Tiamat's eyes to widen. Dragon shot. This time, the sonic sound and the amount of power released was six times higher than before, causing the ground to crack from the mere pressure exerted by the attack. The huge mass of red color was rapidly heading towards Tiamat, who was watching the attack with a much calmer look than at first. In less than two seconds, he was practically inches from his face. A desperate measure is never a good option. Tiamat would deflect the attack into the sky with a simple wave of her hand, causing the attack to angle it, then disappear into the air with a huge deafening explosion that kicked up an incredible blizzard on the spot. Issei could only watch helplessly as Tiamat had deflected the attack without getting annoyed one bit. Finally, his physical and mental exhaustion took over completely, and he fell unconscious. Tiamat approached him with a worried look on her face. It was too sudden a move. Diedrag would speak, causing Tiamat to look down at the now non-existent gauntlet. I didn't have time to tell him it was a bad idea. Pipe quote. Tiamat would close her eyes seriously. It was my fault I didn't tell him that a sudden large drain on magic reserves can make you pass out for a few minutes, or render you completely immobile for a few seconds. Tiamat would carry Issei on his back to take him to the cave. Can I ask you a question? Pipe quote. Tiamat only remained silent as she walked towards the cave, giving her consent. Do you think he can win against Razor? Pipe quote. Tiamat stopped short after hearing the question, lowering her head in serious thought. I don't believe it. Tiamat would answer, closing her eyes with regret. Although he has become very strong in two weeks, I think he would need more time to face a demon that belongs to the high class. His physical strength, stamina, and speed are far below what is recommended for this class of matchups, and I don't think he can just beat him using his dragon shot, his enemy would have to be very stupid to take the hit, since it's not that hard to dodge when the attack is so weak, since the shot is too thin and takes a few seconds. 
to hit, depending on the distance. To be honest, I think the same thing. I'm worried about him. Tiamat would look to the sky with a glint of concern in her eyes. Oh, I don't care if he loses, or no, since in this case, the result is irrelevant when it comes to his safety. What worries me is how much that defeat could affect him. Diedrake would give a great sigh of exhaustion, understanding what Tiamat meant. You only have this chance to return the favor to the bratty demon. End of chapter.